I need a proper curated tutorial on <coughs> you for I think to like put all the things I've learned supposedly by reading all the text into practice slowly it sounds hopeless in that regard. I'm too dumb, basically. I have a great plan of defeating Nazi lands and uh, just eradicating, erasing them from history entirely. Which is great, but not really a sensible thing to do. The <coughs> game doesn't like that. Tutorial. This chapter goes through interface. Uh, four looks way way brighter than three, of course. It's much more useful. This chapter will go through interface and explain what interface does. No shit. The gods are one of the primary resources and are used to pay for everything from recruitment to construction. Manpower is an important uh, resource that puts limit. Uh -huh. It puts limit on how many soldiers your nation can have. The manpower cap represents 10 years of manpower. Recruiting a regiment will cost 1000 manpower per regiment. That's what regiment means, yes. Reinforcing armies that have taken casualties in war will also drain your manpower. Uh, okay. Uh, stability represents how stable your nation is. Stability is connected to unrest, tax income, global trade power, and more. That's nice. Uh, stability can be increased. Instability and expansion tab, reference, and cost administrative power. Stability can be lost through random events, breaking truces, changing the state religion, and having your ruler done combat. Oh, Prestige is gained by winning battles. Wars or through random events. Prestige gives your troops increased morale, legitimacy, and better relationships over time. <coughs> Only republics are affected by republican tradition and it primarily reduces national unrest. So that should be part of the unrest then. It's like... <coughs> it's like temporary thing that is only related to unrest. Republican tradition is lost by uh, keeping the same ruler for several terms and is gained by slowly... It's gained slowly by every year. It's gained slowly. Every year. A low Republican tradition is associated with increased stability cost. Only monarchies are affected by legitimacy and, it's repre and it represents how legitimate the ruler of mo your monarchy is considered. Uh, legitimacy affects unrest, yeah, 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 same thing as the other thing. Power projection is a value that reflects how good your nation is at flexing its muscles. Zero! <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that ain't good. By selecting uh, rivals and by taking aggressive actions against them, your power projection is increased. Having power projection can give you bonuses to your country. Privateering, winning wars, embargoing, support, rebels, and examples of actions that increase power projection. Invoice. Uh, okay. 
Our characters are used to perform different tasks. Merchants are used to collect income from trade and start a trade. Colonists are used to fund new colonies. Diplomats are used to perform diplomatic actions. I've never once been able to create a colony. Uh, diplomats are used to perform diplomatic actions. Missionaries are used to convert region or province. Uh, an invoice will return when they have finished performing their tasks or run out of things that they can do. Uh, you have a term cap, as in they can perform something for, I guess, 10 years or something? Like improve relationships, specifically diplomats, and then the game says, oh, yep, that's it. You're done. Bye. <coughs> have three resources which combined are called monarch points, even when I'm a republic. Uh, these are administrative power, diplomatic power, military power. You gain monarch points each month and amount depends on your rulers and your advisor's skills. Also alerts notify you about information that you might want to do something about. Uh, left clicking alert will uh, take you to where you can do something about it. Right clicking will dismiss it. Red alerts are urgent, yellow are important, and green are non urgent. I don't know, this should be higher actually. Also, someone died. Oh, I don't give a shit about that. It's fine. Fuck all. Byzantinium, you say, eh? Where in the fuck is Byzantinium? Denmark is suitably far away, I can deal with that. <coughs> Picking rivals gives you some sort of bonuses. Uh, actually, it doesn't. It uh, reduces the... Negative modifiers, I think. It's fucking weird. Alerts, blah blah blah. Different. Yellow alerts are important. Diplomatic offers from Europe here. There are no diplomatic offers right now. A production interface is designed to help you produce. Uh, designed to help you production more efficiently. Yes. Production chapter and basic tutorial helps with that. Buildings. Okay. I have no idea what I'm doing, by the way. Uh, I'm trying to stabilize and improve. Holy Roman screen. Uh, this which nation has the seat. Fucking Nazis. Also, we have member status. 
uh, New State Origins Catholic, unfortunately. I uh, will have to, uh, like, we have religion, unfortunately, and that's the way of things. Uh, you will have fixes to make an X-ray to the papacy, and I'm going to zero on the grade. I mean, most people influenced increase the chances of becoming a controller. I'm not going to become a controller. The outliner helps you by giving fast informational progress. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, score zero. <laughs> uh, divide into categories, default technology area. You can view score completion by chart to see. Map notes will change the information given to you on the board map. The next chapter will go through them in more detail. So I don't even know what my trade is. Map notes are two to help you better get information. I want this. Makes more sense to me. Uh, help better information about the world to play in uh, the default man no this turn map mode it sucks by the way political map node will carry as trade shows you which provinces belong to what train zone and additional also show you where the trade is trading with these guys uh, Raffles, where you order merchants in certain direction. Can I do that actually? Economy trade. Ferrara. And also helps with the money. Uh, which principle to trade zone? In addition, it also shows you where the trade flows or other merchants. Still trade certain direction. You will learn about trade. It did nothing, did it? And you will learn more about trade steering later on the crate. Imperial manpower. What? Um, sorry, Imperial Map Node shows provinces that belong to Holy Roman Empire. It's pathetic. We don't even have Greece? What the fuck? What's wrong with you, 1444? Uh, green provinces are Imperial, orange are electors. Oh, almost everyone is elector. I get it. And purple emperor. <coughs> you may notice that one of your provinces, Brasica, belongs to the empire, while your U.S. Venice do not. The fuck? It's green. I do. A religious map note uh, shows you the spread of religion around the world. This will make it easy to switch provinces to not share the state religion or you might find friends or foes. I will try to use none of these. Just the political one. <laughs> Diplomatic map note gives information about where your cores are. That is surprisingly important. Green stripes show your core provinces that you do not own. Cool. 
Corfu or Bain here. Ah, don't stop changing. Serbia. Why do I own Serbia? Checking on province belonging to an international update diplomatic map. No, to that mission's information. That is very confusing, yes. There are many more map nodes to help you get information. <laughs> Fuck it. We have plenty others to figure it out on your own. About what is going on in the game. Try clicking uh, one of the additional map node buttons and have a look. Mental types. Ooh. What? <laughs> what does this mean? Uh, what are you? Uh, Nazis, course and Christ, don't care. What's your government? Monistic order, and everyone else is like a kingdom, I guess. Yeah, that's a Bohemia's kingdom. Right, I get it. Next. Because chapter next chapter will go straight and more later. Ah! Trade is an important part of European universities. Well, that explains why I suck at it. Uh, this uh, world is divided up by different trade nodes with each having a different number of provinces in them. Provinces uh, produce different trade goods and trade value of those goods in transport to a prospective trade node. Transported to their respective trade nodes. Trade nodes are visible on the map as either floating buoys or cities. And they have light blue stripes connecting each other. Click on Venezia to continue. A good proportion of trade power is in a trade node. A good proportion of trade power in a trade node comes from provinces and can be improved by building trade buildings. Trade value in a node comes from uh, provinces. Collect. You can either collect income from the trade value, steer the trade to the next text node. Trade power is very important value. That determines how much trade in a trade node you control. The more trade you control, the more income you can collect, and the more value you can have. Money likes money, improves the status basically. Yeah, that's something you should deal with. I, can't put I never can put anything. I am just all depth out on these resources. The merchants can perform two different uh, actions in trade node. Collect from trade requires that you own a province that trade node and collect income come from. <coughs> the amount of trade power you have compared to your competition determines how many tickets you gain in trade income. That's not helpful. Have merchant collect from trade in Venice trade note. Continue. I can't. Oh, somebody fucked up. Somebody fucked up. Cannot cancel. <coughs> well, we'll have to wait for him to them to complete the true trade route. <laughs> Second action your merchant can perform is transfer trade power. Yeah, I literally cannot do that, mate. 
This will transfer trade value from trade node to another. The amount of trade power you have compared to your competitors determines how much trade value is transferred. Select Alexandria Province and then click on button to go to trade node. Remember to unpause the game. Uh, the trim map node shows you where the different trade nodes are. Which provinces belong to them and also how trade is steered. I literally see none of that. As you see here, you are now steering trade from Alexandria to where? I don't see that anywhere. See why I don't even mess with the trade? It's just well over my head. <clears throat> my tiny, tiny brain. What is this? Forward Constantinople is being sent to Venice. That's what you mean? I'm guessing so, but Jesus, that's ridiculous. Should have a special separate pointer, like a color, transfer of funds. The arrows being the trade routes. Trade in only flowing directions, the arrows are pointing. Some trade nodes are so called end nodes, uh, which means trade cannot be steered away from them. Venice and Genoa are two examples of the end nodes. Trade power determines how much trade value is transferred from one node to another. <coughs> See, the entirety of interaction I have with the trade is I just uh, send all the traders I have immediately to whatever seems to give me most money or makes political sense, depending on my plans, and just leave it at that. Let them do what the fuck they're doing. It's black magic to my brain. Trade power directly affects how large portion of trade in trade node you control. Trade powers come from provinces and light ships that are protecting trade. There are also ideas and diplomatic advice that affect global trade power. Select a ship in Porto Venezia. Allied ships can be ordered to protect trade, this means they will patrol the trade node and increase the amount of trade power you have in the node. Having your ships protect the trade is very important for increasing trade income. Okay. easiest way of increasing your trade power is building more light ships even and having them protect trade. Barks that are protecting trade increase your trade power in the trade node by three. Which 
Park protecting trade node in trade node is increasing the trade power by three. Higher level light ships have higher trade power. Select park from list to the left and click on green provinces on the map to start building them. Remember to all pause the game. Right, these are just outlined green. That's it. are being built. Let them get to full health actually first. Maybe build another Right, that might explain what the fuck was happening with my trades. I don't actually send defensive units ever anywhere, so I get to get owned. Come on. Try to have everything protected, right? One more to God, please. Uh, 
I may have to build five in total and just leave them. Alright, this concludes this tutorial. <sighs> I probably didn't gain any understanding. Because I'm dumb. All of modern real-time and turn-based strategies should take a lot of hints from uh, past grades, especially like uh, Chris Sawyer's Transport Tycoon Deluxe, because that's, in my opinion, the pinnacle of how to do it, and how to do it right. Yes, you have plenty of options, and they really help, and there was a mod for the original, not the original, the deluxe transport icon with like even controlling your competition. You didn't have to buy them, you just had to have 75% of them owned. Reconquista Inquisition and New World. Basically Get your shit together, kill everyone, and steal everything. Holy fuck, look at all that. Uh, army recruitment is an important aspect of going to war. Recruitment progress takes place in a province, but it can be started in two ways. Either through the production interface, Top left or by clicking recruit regimen button in the province. Each regimen costs thousand manpower. Click the production interface to continue. Select the regiment from list to the left. Click green provinces to start recruitment. Each customer number two. Just any. Okay. A month. Huh. When you declare war on target, you want to have Cassius Belly on them. If you do not have Cassius Belly or justification for war, you will suffer negative effect from declaring war on them. Click Granada. E. Click 
I've more select conquest Gaspini and take another as a war goal. No, let's like But I don't have that. Oh, it's selected for me, I think. See, I don't have really much of a choice in the matter. are and who is the war leader of each side. Battles and sieges are listed at the bottom. No battles so far. Argon is my ally. Results of war will be recorded and are presented in war score. War score is being gained by occupying enemy province and by winning land or naval battles. If an enemy occupies your province or defeats you in battle, you will instead lose war score. War score decides it can be demanded at peace of a war score of 100% to continue. That's not good. There's a disease outbreak. Show them out, bow, punish the race king, make it illegal offense, punishable by burning, to either own or produce transition over the Bible. Fuck the Bible. Granada! Dies defeated and ex them and finish the conquest of Spain. Right click on the war overview shield bottom right, select only Provence to demand annexation and then send demand. Oh, 
auszugeben. This concludes the Conquista chapter of Spanish. Hold on, I haven't even put my enemies up. A ruler is very important for the development of your country. You have three resources which combined are called monarch points. These administrative power, these are administrative power, diplomatic power and military power. You gain monarch points each month and the amount depends on your monarch's skills and your advisors. Uh, sorry, I was distracted. I'm trying to fossilize those two. <laughs> to have peninsula all for myself. What? Isn't this British? W two? What the fuck? Uh, mark points, from supply, diplomatic power, military power, you can mark points, amount of blah blah. Advisors boost more points, I do that. They cost go to hire and also pay the salary some month. Hiring more expensive advisors will give you more monthly monarch points, but you will gain less gold each one. You have a free advisor slot, go to court the uh, okay. Provinces are provinces that your nation considers their home alliance. It is important to make provinces into cores to avoid overextension. A province that is not a core province has significantly reduced tax income and manpower. Having a claim on a recently conquered province will reduce the cost and time it takes to make it a core. How? Hmm? That was automatic. Okay. <laughs> because I try to manage post conquering, right? I was trying to be a good player and do the things right and that kind of resulted in the core being built. Makes sense actually. Castillo. Nothing is happening outside of that, right? Oh. <laughs> 
nobody's say trying to overthrow me or anything like that. Because you can build core here, yes, it's probably more convenient, but you also have the upkeep stuff that you get from the alert, which I use to deal with it, right? That is my assumption, at least, given what happened here. Or maybe the advice was to adopt nothing, I don't know. Oh, stop. Maintaining a religion unit is important for keeping your nation stable and rebel free. To have a religion unity, you must convert provinces to your state a religion. Which is something I entirely ignore, because fuck it, if they want to believe bullshit, let them. Because all religion is bullshit. Uh, the conquering the religion of province requires missionary. Conversion process can be improved by high stability. It is a core, you fucking asshole. I have sent a missionary. He will do his dirty work of raping children and lying to people until they shut up and give up. Buildings are an important part of improving your nation's economy and better strength. Yes, that's why I'm pissed off I can't do anything. But most buildings can be built on provinces, but they are limited by the number of building plots in the province. That's not my experience. My biggest issue is that I don't have enough resources to build them. Fucking church, really? See, I can't build anything. Say church anywhere. Courthouse, town hall, university, workshop, courting house, cathedral church. 25, I see. Let's do some trade. Right, right. No. Can I dismiss them?
And if you're in position, because you're very active in Kingdom of Castile and Aragon between 1480 and 1530, forced conversion and expanded inquisitorial powers led to unrest in 1484 to 1485, there was a revolt in protest of inquisitional expansionist power. It's 20 fucking units, that's brutal. Come on. Take them out and then invade the lost territory, right? Stability is fine, I'm plus two. Represents how stable your nation is. Stability is connected to the unrest, tax income, global trade power, and more. Stability can be increased in stability and expansion tab, but costs administrative power. Okay. Is a way to form one between your nation and our nation with no one selected. Click Portugal. Believe how we have our marriage. Uh, having our own marriage increases your legitimacy over time, but will give you one uh, time reduction of legitimacy. That Depends on a difference in prestige and legitimacy in two countries. Having a real marriage with another nation gives you a chance of uh, merging your dynasties and possibly entering a personal union. <coughs> we are royally married to everyone around us. Our king slash queen is very into reproductive experiences. Nobody asks me to do anything, so diplomacy is I can't. It's all locked. A 
aceite and this is aceite. I'm really going to do this, hopefully at some point. <clears throat> I the fucking fire. but I can't really do much. Oh, that's what it wanted me to do. things everywhere it will increase my ability to create trade hopefully which reminds me do I have an actual trade happening Make it all into a trade stuff, right? Ships doing anything?
like myself. Yes, you can obviously click the things here. Yeah, it should work. It is a fucking piece. Are my ships actually doing anything? break from the tutorial just to form this economical powerhouse. It will sooner or later improve my trade ability into ridiculous levels. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Not me. Huh. I cannot annex this.
decision allow you to reform your niche in some way and requirements are fulfilled you can enact decision and immediately gain the effects of decision some decisions can be large undertakings such as killing Germany or forming Italy uh, click the national decision available alert on decision time from Spain diplomatically to continue. Huh? Technology can be unlocked by spending monarch points. I've been doing that. Monarch point cost to acquire technologies is modified by institutions you have embraced. The start of the game on an constitution is federal zone which starts embraced power countries with Europe in most Asia. Fifty years new institution is born in province somewhere in the world and it will take then slowly spread to the rest of the world from that point. In order to embrace institution it needs to have spread at least ten percent of your province. Once an institution is born every country it has not yet embraced it will get slowly increasing penalty to take costs. Yeah, that's probably what happens to me a lot. What institutions exist and how they have spread can be examined cooking institutions bar. Unlocking an idea is an idea group cost 400 mark points. These are administrative for diplomatic or military power, which monarch points are used depends on the idea group. It is a good idea to choose uh, an idea group that uses monarch points of the type you have plenty of. Exploration. Okay. I can't. It caps off everything? What the fuck?
it will take a little while to develop, I guess. Production and trading on the other side. Do what act? Fifteen twenty eight, that's like fifty years behind the uh, actual proper way. Oh well. I'm gonna save this for later. Thank you for watching. Please have a good one.